Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is quite unusual, not having people in the sanctuary to whom I'm speaking. <laughs> I'm facing the camera and giving the sermon in this manner, which is totally strange to me. However, I welcome you all this morning to come to the Mountain Home Worship Service on our church Facebook page. We have a long road in front of us, so let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, you know we're not pleased with what is going on in the world. We lift this up to you, and because you are the creator, the father, and the healer of this world, we lift up this coronavirus crisis to you. We now ask that you open our hearts and minds to what I'm, we are rehearing this morning about your love for us. Yet you let your words be my words and open my heart to say what you want me to say. I ask these things in your precious son's name, Jesus. Amen. Throughout the Bible is mentioned many times where God or Jesus told the people or person, follow me or go the way I want you to go. Do what I ask you to do. We all know the stories. Go to the promised land. Go forward. Take the city of Jericho. I'm with you. I will lead you. You know, before the children of Israel got there, they were in Egypt as prisoners, as slaves. But the Lord talked to Moses and says, you are going to be the leader of my people. You are going to follow my direction and lead the children of Israel out of Egypt here to the promised land. Follow my directions. Do as I ask you to do and everything will be fine. And we know the story. Everything was fine. Yeah, the children of Israel did their stupid stunts and stuff like that, but Moses still led. He was still following the directions that Jesus slash God had given him. Forty years later, when the children of Israel reached the Jordan River, it was in flood stage. This is after 40 years of wandering because they disobeyed and not following the Lord. They had a choice to make at the Jordan River. Either step out in faith and go, or just stay wandering in the desert where they're at. When we know the story, the priest walked up to the Jordan River carrying the ark, and they stepped into the Jordan River as the water hit their feet. Whoop, the river split and dried up. And they crossed the, the Jordan River on dry ground. Now, theologians have come up with many ideas on this. Some believe that the Jordan River was probably backed up a thousand, mile, a thousand feet, if not more. It's only 80 feet across the river. But they backed it up a thousand feet because they had hundreds of people coming over. Thousands of people coming over of the children of Israel. But the land was dry. God worked a miracle for them because they stepped out in faith and did what they're supposed to do. Later, Elijah in 2 Kings 2, verses 8. Elijah and Elijah are walking up to the Jordan River. Elijah just takes his mantle, swings it out, boop, hits the water, boop, the water divides and they crossed the Jordan River on dry ground. A few hours later, after Elijah has gone to heaven, Elijah comes back to the Jordan River and he has Elijah's mantle. And this is a test of his faith because he comes to that same Jordan River. But what does he do? In verse 13, 
He takes Elijah's mantle, boop, touches the water, boop, it splits. And he walks over on dry ground. You see, he stepped out in faith and followed God in the directions that were given to him. There are many other events in the Bible we all know about. One of the big events, of course, is David versus Goliath. David was not a fighter, a swordsman, a great warrior. No, David was a shepherd boy. But the Lord said, David, I need you to go out and take care of Goliath. He goes, okay. And he goes to the river and picks up five stones because remember, Goliath had four brothers. So he went walking across the river, or walking down the valley to where Goliath was. Choo, 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 bing. End of Goliath. David stepped out in faith in God. He followed through. You know, if <clears throat> Saul had kept faith in God, Goliath would never have been able to be a problem for the Israelites. But because Saul turned his face from God, they had problems. What is going on around us in the world today? It's very bad. But are we stepping out in faith? Trusting God to lead us and direct us and guide us in what we should be doing. The news is being blown so far out of proportion. We're getting so many weird from the pros and the cons and then everything in between. It's amazing to me. Some people are cowering in their homes in fear. Others are just ignoring everything. And it's causing all sorts of trouble. And they're reporting, the news is reporting all sorts of stuff that if you stop and thought for a minute, you realize how fake it was. There is a lot of evil going on in this world today. A lot of evil because of the coronavirus and because of other things going on. There's a lot of evil. Satan is working on his fullest abilities to do as much damage as he can because he knows his time is short. Jesus said that during the end time events, many other things will be occurring. All sorts of things going on around the world that show that the end is here. Question is, are we being ready and willing to stay focused on God? Or do we follow whatever man slash Satan has for guidance? Are we followers of Jesus, standing firm in our faith and keep walking forward no matter what is going on around us? Where are we at? Psalms 91 7 says, a thousand shall fall on your side and 10,000 on your right side, but it shall not come unto thee. If you stand firm with Jesus, you'll be fine. However, people are saying, sir, wait a minute. We hear that some Adventists have died from COVID-19. I said, true. However, I've known many Adventists who have died in plane crashes boating accidents, train accidents, vehicle accidents, not to mention illnesses of all sorts, and even a shooting the other day. But you know what? If these people kept their faith in Jesus and following him, no matter what was going on around them, on resurrection morning, they'd be seeing Jesus and their families. You know, we've lost a lot of people here in our church due to illnesses and diseases. The ones I'm talking about were good, devout followers of Jesus. We had many good discussions and fun discussions on the subject with them. <coughs> Excuse me. This moment. 
I'm positive that we will see them in heaven. The question is, are we going to stand faithful to God no matter what happens around us? In the book of Matthew, you all know the story, Matthew 14, 24 through 30. It's one of the fun stories. And I have to change what I was going to say it as because that's not exactly how the Bible says it, so we'll go by what the Bible says. <coughs> Excuse me. The disciples are in a boat, and the water is getting rocky and like that. And Jesus comes walking across the water to the boat, and they panic. Ah! And Jesus said, relax, it's me. And then Peter, <coughs> excuse me, Peter says, Lord, since you're out in the water, um, allow me to come out and join you. Jesus told Peter, come on ahead, Peter. Come into the water. So Peter stepped out in faith and stepped into the water. Now we know in this story, the waters were so turbulent around him that he looked at the water and took his eyes off Jesus. And he sank. But then Peter yelled, Jesus, save me. And Jesus did. You know, there's two stories here. One, he stepped out in faith, stepping out where Jesus said he could walk. The second one is when he lost faith in looking at Jesus and he looked down, he still had faith enough to call for Jesus for help. And Jesus provided. Stepping out in faith in impossible situations and depending on Jesus is an amazing thing. By all the rules and medical sense we have today, Megan should not have survived that pickup truck hitting her in the back as she is walking. Only by the grace of God is she alive today. She has three broken vertebrae in her back, five broken ribs, three on one side, two on the other. Both collarbones are damaged. Left shoulder dislocated and rotator cuff um, slightly damaged. She has a busted femur in her right leg, a cracked right jaw, a concussion and damage, a concussion to her head and damage to her knees. Not counting the massive road rash she has on her hands, arms, her back, and knees. You know, looking at it, by the rules of the thinking of doctors and stuff like that, she didn't stand a chance. Well, I forgot to mention, she had, because of the concussion, she had uh, blood in her brain area. But again, by their standards, she had no chance. But you know what? By faith in God, she did. Megan stepped out in faith, we stepped out in faith, our church family stepped out in faith, our own family and friends from around the world stepped out in faith and prayed to the Lord to take care of Megan. They all prayed and were trusting that God would take care of Megan. Last Wednesday, Megan walked out of the hospital. Well, actually, she didn't walk out because they have rules. So she had to rip, ride a wheelchair out to the car. Once she got to the car, she was able to get out of the wheelchair and walk and hop into the car without assistance, without a back brace, without crutches. She was able to walk out and get into the car. Praise the Lord. Funny thing is, a couple of days before she walked out of the hospital, they'd take her for exercise out into the courtyard, which is about the size of this sanctuary, if you think about it in that manner. And she walked around out there for a few minutes. And then she walked back into the hallway, and which would be the equivalent of about this distance here, walking from the podium, 
over on that side where the piano is, down that wall, then across the back of the church, and basically two windows up on this side to her bedroom, to where her bed was at. No crutches, no back brace, and nobody helping her. Oh yeah, they are right there, walking behind her, ready to catch her if it became necessary. But it was not necessary, she did it. And she said when she got to bed, she was extremely tired, but she did it. She stepped out in faith. But remember, she had a broken leg. They put a metal rod in this leg, um, 14 inches long, with screws. They put metal rods in her back to cover the three vertebrae that were broke with more screws. Um, she says she can't go through the metal detectors at the, <laughs> at the hospital, I mean, at the uh, airports anymore. <laughs> But um, she did this. And that's only three weeks from the accident. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah, she has broken ribs. I think I forgot to mention that. Don't get her laughing too hard. Or hopefully she doesn't have to cough because it does hurt. But it's fun watching her try not to laugh too hard, but yeah, she wants to laugh. It's fun watching. You know, we all stepped out in faith and asked the Lord to take care of her and to heal her, and God has. Yes, she still has a long road of recovery, but praise the Lord, she's done great. And she's definitely glad she's out of the hospital. She says she prefers better food elsewhere. She'd even take food from a... Um, fast food restaurant like McDonald's or something like that than from the hospital food. But that's Megan. Megan stepped out in faith and us and our families and friends stepped out in faith and asked God to help to heal her. And he has. This young lady now is staying at a friend's home in Boise. <laughs> Our house cannot meet that physical therapy requirement. Our bathtub shower, we can't step over the bathtub. And also, uh, technically a wheelchair cannot go down our hallway or into the bathroom. So she has to be in a place in, so she's in a friend's home in Boise. Because Amber, my daughter Amber's home, the shower's upstairs, up a set of stairs. No, it won't work. Anyway, she has a long road to, re to recovery. Two to three weeks to pick her arms up above her shoulders. Four to six weeks for her ribs to heal. Four to six weeks for this leg to heal. Probably eight more weeks, six or eight more weeks, for her back to heal. The doctors take x-rays every week to see how she's doing. She's doing real good. Walking out in faith in the path that God has provided for Megan to go, and she's doing it. And she's amazing, the doctors and the therapists of all sorts, because she's doing things they said she shouldn't be able to do yet. But she's doing it, because she's stepping out in faith. <coughs> yes. She has a long ways to go yet in this path that God has provided for her to be back to normal. And the doctors say she should have no problem with her legs, ribs, or back once they're healed. Praise the Lord. She stepped down in faith. This is an example for us. We should be trusting in God to show us the path and guide us. He gives us a path. We need to step out and do it. This should be a daily thing for us. Not only the Bible reading in the morning or the Bible reading in the evening, whatever it happens to be for you. But daily you should be looking through the Bible and learning more about God's love. 
you should be learning about end time events. What is going on? The question is, how are you in your walk with the Lord in faith? You have to understand that you have to build a relationship with your Savior, Jesus Christ. Otherwise, you'll get ignored. It's amazing me of all the many miracles I've heard about recently, from rescues of un unbelievable locations to healings to, to amazing events. Did you hear about the gentleman who was who had a heart attack and the people with him spent an hour and a half doing CPR until rescue people could arrive and he's alive and he has no problem with his mind or anything else? That's amazing. It's a miracle. I want to tell you about another miracle. It's amazing to me. I have a niece who's 16 years old. The other day, because of coronavirus, they do these camera videos, camera sermons. And she was asked if she'd be willing to do it. She said, oh, Lord, no, thank you. But the Lord said, I need you to do this. She presented an awesome sermon that was very powerful, expertly presented, and wow. <laughs> a presentation of the love of Jesus for each and every one of us. I wish I had the gifts that she has of doing presentations with her wildness of doing it, her awesomeness of presenting. I don't know if y'all would be allowed to do it here in the church, so because I'd be a little bit different. Anyway, but she did it, and you know what? You might think, if you see the sermon, you might think, oh, she's done them all the time. No, this is the first time she's ever stepped in front of a group of people or gone into a camera to present a sermon. She stepped out in faith and followed what God had asked her to do. Praise the Lord. In fact, she has another one scheduled the week after next. Because of that one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The question for us today, are we stepping out in faith and love for Jesus? Are we following Jesus? Are we letting him lead us and guide us where we need to go and what our next step should be? Jesus is a good shepherd. He wants us to follow him no matter what's going on around us to follow him and go where he leads. Or, even yet, go in the direction he tells us to go. Jesus loves us and will only ask us to do what we need to do. However, it's up to us to accept it and then walk with it. In a few weeks, hopefully we'll reach a grandiose decision about reopening this church. Yes, it's a building, but it is God's house. It's a house of worship that I'm using today to present this sermon to you. It says where two or three are gathered, he is here with us. This has become his home. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people have had too much time off. And I'm worried about this part. They've been at home doing other things not related to God and the church. And watching other TV shows and doing things at home instead of listening to God's guidance. They're leaving God out of the equation. You know, we have our church Facebook page. And on YouTube, you can get into 3B, ABN, Hope Channel, uh, Hope Sabbath School, Faith for Today, Amazing Facts, and many, many other Seventh-day Adventist programs that provide different presentations, different discussions on different subjects, and of course, on sermons. They also have Sabbath School lessons for adults and for children. And they're awesome. And they're available. Question is, are you using them? I was asked the other day if I knew how many people are actually watching our church sermons on the 
church Facebook page. I told them we're only averaging six people. Her watching the complete sermon. Oh yes, we have 173. Ping it. But only six stayed on for the whole 20, 30 minutes. I hope I have at least six when I when my sermon is shown on the on the Facebook page. At this moment, we can't come to church and worship service and Sabbath school classes. However, we can do it online. We only have an average of six to eight people come on our Zoom adult Sabbath school class. We normally used to have 14 people for the class. I pray that all of us are using the venues available to learn more about God's love, whether it is on TV, a laptop, a tablet, or a desktop computer. By the way, I put this information in the weekly newsletter for you. So you have how to get to these different locations to learn more about God's love. I ask that, ladies and gentlemen, that you step out in faith and go to these sites and learn about his love and then step out in his direction and do what he's asked you to do. It will be amazing when we open these doors in a few weeks. The question is, will you be coming? Will we have the normal church attendance of 14 for the adult Sabbath school class and 40 to 50 people for the worship service? I have no idea. I pray that we do have. I also pray that we have more than just the 14 or the 40. My heart is heavy with this because of what I'm seeing up there. The sadness, the misery, and the suffering. I wish and pray right now that Jesus would heal everyone on earth who has the Corona 19 virus or whatever other version of the virus it is. That he healed them all. Yes, it put a lot of rich people and famous politicians and everybody else out of business. But it stopped the death and suffering of families and save a lot of time and efforts for nurses and doctors and other staff to be able to have time off to relax and be with their families. It's up to the Lord. It's up to us to ask. And I pray that you do ask on a daily basis about the Lord stepping in for this situation. And I praise the fact that we in Idaho are doing very well in this situation. There it is, people. We're in the end time events. We need to be aware of it and make sure we're truly following Jesus. Study the Bible. Daniel and Revelation and the other books of the Bible that talk about end time events. Step out in faith and stay in faith with Jesus no matter what happens around us. Step out in faith. Because you see, Jesus says he will guide you and lead you into all righteousness. Follow him and go where he wants you to go. It is amazing what's going on around us. And I pray that we get back to normalcy in whatever manner that may be. I want to close with this. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you forever. Amen. Thank you. Have a blessed day.